All right, let's go. The saga continues thematically with the Ringo South, my favorite quest. Would you look at all these cards? My goodness. All right, we're playing campaign mode. Each player may change hero cards without incurring the threat penalty. So I'm ignoring that, obviously. I'm just changing heroes whenever I want. And we earned a bunch of boons, which I'll go over in a minute. One goes into our hand. The other three get shuffled into our deck, and that would take place after we draw our opening hands. So we got to make sure we do that in the right order. All right, I'm going to go through these cards kind of quick because we've seen them before. So burdens, we have Gandalf's Delay, so I'm not drawing a card on my first turn. We also earned Last Quest Fear of Discovery, so that is shuffled into the encounter deck. We have Ho Tom Bombadil in our starting hand. It's basically a test of will that can be used once in the campaign. Sam is a ranger and has plus one defense. We also have Old Bogey Stories, which lets you shuffle away a hand of six and redraw six cards. You have to have at least six cards in your hand to play that. That starts out attached to somebody. Uh, we also have Mr. Underhill. It's basically a feint for the entire round if you choose an enemy engaged with you. And then the one ring will, of course, be attached to our ring bearer, Frodo. If Frodo leaves play, we lose the game. And then uh, the Frodo I have chosen this time is Moneybags Frodo. So this Frodo says you can exhaust the one ring to give a resource to another hero you control. That's a planning action. And that's the, uh, the famous mistake I made where I was using that ability whenever I wanted. And it's a planning action. But this quest does not punish you for exhausting the ring very much. So... It's a good Frodo to use for this quest. But the box he came in, which is the Mountain of Fire, whew, you do not want to be putting that ring on in those quests. That, that'll that burn you, <laughs> literally. You will you will not do well putting the ring on in those quests. But in this quest, it's fine. Uh, my other heroes, I got Tactics Aragorn, and then I also have Tactics Merry. So I needed some Tactics resources. And then uh, rounding it out, as I already said, is Sam. So this is a contract deck. So we are playing the Fellowship contract. And uh, the goal is to get nine different characters in play. You can only include unique allies in your deck, which is fine because thematically I'm doing the nine walkers. Starting threat of 26 in the deck I built for this quest, uh, the Fellowship contract, as I said. And then here are the rest of the walkers, including Bill the Pony. So normally for a Fellowship deck, you don't build them like this. You would want one ofs of all these different unique allies, and you would want probably 25, maybe closer to 30 would be better. And then you're just hoping to draw any unique ally. It doesn't matter which one. And you just try to get to nine as fast as possible. But obviously I couldn't do that here. So we have Overhill, Underhill, Gandalf. You got to keep your threat going up by two every round to keep him in play. And yeah, so I'm just hoping to get to nine. Don't know if I can. It's a little tricky. No guarantee. Also have the Fellowship of the Ring, uh, Fellowship Sphered card. So that's great. So each hero gets plus one willpower when that's in play. Got some weapons. So uh, the Fellowship loaded themselves up. So we got a bow, one of the daggers, Gimli's axe. I also have the Black Arrow. Yeah, it's not thematic. I mean, the Black Arrow was in the Hobbit, but Legolas does shoot that one arrow at the warg chieftain that catches on fire from Gandalf as it flies. So, uh, you know, it's blackened, right? <laughs> so anyway, uh, it's just a good card and it's an arrow. So I included it. Uh, some friend of friends, Gandalf's toys. We got the Horn of Gondor. I doubt I'll put this into play because I don't plan on anyone getting destroyed, but it's thematic. Uh, Gandalf's wearing Narya, Raymond of War. Like I said, they're all suited up. Uh, maybe I can turn Aragorn into a different version of himself. That'd be great. A very good tale. Uh, they do tell a lot of stories at the Council of Elrond. So I'm hoping that's a way I can get some of these allies into play. Fohammer, of course, is uh, my card draw because I have no lore and no spirit. So uh, a little short on card draw here, which is why I have one copy of We Are Not Idle. You can still play it just to draw a new card. And then the Free Peoples, which is super thematic. So I have to have nine different traits, and then it costs five neutral resources, but then everybody readies, and they all get plus one willpower. So uh, obviously amazing and very thematic. All right, let's get back to the game. So before we look at the quest card, let's draw our opening hand. What am I looking for? Build a pony would be great. 
I would love to draw Pippin because he's easy to afford. Gandalf wouldn't be bad. Ah, okay, this is going great. Gandalf, Pippin, a dagger, and two foe hammers? Yeah, that's perfect. So uh, I have a weapon. I have a way to draw three cards twice, and I got two allies to put in play. All right, cool. The uh, boons. Okay, so we have these four boons. We have the Mithril Shirt, Andril, Glamdring, and Sting. They're all pretty good. So Sting isn't bad, really, and it you know would go on Frodo. But I think I want to get Andril on Aragorn. So that's what's great about Foe Hammer is even if I didn't draw that dagger, I would still be putting a weapon into my deck. So, all right, now we take those boons that we did not choose, and those get shuffled into the deck. Okay, let's take a look at the quest, the Council of Elrond. We're going to set the Lust for the Ring, the Redhorn Pass, Doors of Durin, and the Watcher in the Water aside, out of play. So here's the doors, here's the Watcher, they're going out of play. Redhorn Gate is going to be right there, Lust for the Ring right there. All right, side 1B, the Council of Elrond. This is so much fun. Forced, at the end of the planning phase, each player places the top card of his deck face up in front of him in player order until there are a total of four face-up cards between the players. The players then choose to put one of these cards into play, one into a hand, one into a deck shuffled in, and one into a discard pile. So that means in a solo game, all four cards will be put in front of me from the top of my deck, and I get to do each of those options with one of the cards. Super, super fun, but we gotta go through planning first. But wait, there's more. Then, either shuffle Lust for the Ring into the encounter deck, or each player has to raise their threat by five, and then we advance to stage two. So uh, you have to remember to make that decision after you do the Council of Elrond, and then you go into the quest phase at stage two. All right, so two tactics resources will be spent on Pippin, so he will ready and get plus two attack when I engage an enemy with a higher engagement cost than my threat. I will also put on the ring and give a resource to one of my tactics heroes which I will use to put in the dagger of westernays so I'll put that on Mary for thematic reasons and I think we'll call that good all right so let's do the council of Elrond I'm going to take the top four cards of my deck and place them here on the board so let's take a look at what we got Ooh, I am liking this already sting Gimli fellowship of the ring and Frodo's intuition Okay, uh, really good choices. Really happy with this. So Sting, I could put on, well, thematically Frodo. It would actually go better on Sam for playing purposes. But uh, all right, Frodo's Intuition going into my hand. So that'll draw me cards. Gimli, of course, going in for free. So a four-cost ally coming in for free. Fellowship of the Ring gives me a nice willpower boost for my heroes. But I don't really need it since I'm playing a Fellowship deck. So I'm going to discard that, and I'm going to shuffle Sting back into the deck. Sting is amazing on Sam, but uh, since I'm doing a thematic campaign, it'll probably end up on Frodo throughout most of the campaign if I get it in play. And Frodo's intuition into my hand. Yeah. All right. Lust for the ring being shuffled in. It's a condition attachment. Pretty nasty, but I don't want to raise my threat by five. So we now have a pretty nasty condition attachment, and I have no condition removal in this deck. So if that comes out... Uh, one of my heroes is in trouble. Okay, so that all happened at the end of the planning phase. There's my current hand, lots of card draw, so I should be able to get this fellowship online. If the card draw uh, stutters, then it's hard to get the fellowship online, but should be okay. All right, 2A, the nine walkers. We are gonna make the red horn pass the active location, and then the first player reveals cards from the encounter deck until there is at least X threat in the staging area, X is twice the number of players in the game. This can be really dangerous because there are surging one threat cards. So if you uh, hit one of those, you, that can surge into something else. And yeah, it's pretty nasty because you're doing the when revealed effects on these cards, which includes keywords. Okay, let's take a look at the Red Horn Pass. Four threat, that doesn't matter because it's active. Six progress, it's immune, it's a mountain. Forced, when Red Horn Pass is explored. Each player assigns X damage among characters he controls. X is the number of damage here, so it goes into victory display. So this quest is all about uh, doing horrible things based on the amount of damage on the active locations when they're explored. This represents you trying to sneak through. Okay, now we need to reveal cards until we get two threat. Our first card is Regiments of Crows. This isn't good. Okay, when revealed, place three damage on each active location. So there is a way in this quest to have two active locations. 
Uh, great. So right away we got to place three damage, which means when we explore this thing, we got to deal damage out to our characters. And then we get a, oh good, Howling Warg, which is two threat. Because see, you could have revealed a one threat Warg that surges and that surges into like a three threat enemy. You know, you, you can easily get more than two threat in staging doing this. Okay, side B, eight progress needed. During the travel phase, we have to travel to a location, if able, and then after an enemy engages a player, place one damage on the active location. Okay, so that is nasty, of course. Let's go questing. All right, let's send Gimli, Pippin, and Sam. So that would be a total of seven. Uh, I'm gonna take a risk here and send Frodo, because I do have that fear of discovery, but I'm gonna send nine. Fear of discovery is a burden that you would want to exhaust the ring bearer if you could. But instead we get a Region, which is a three threat location. It's the worst one. So if you get damage on it, when it's explored, you have to discard an ally for each damage on that thing, which is terrible when you're trying to build a fellowship deck where you're trying to get up to nine characters. So uh, that's not great. We do place progress. We place four out of the six. And even though engaging the Howling Warg will place a damage, and then when it attacks, it places a damage, I'm still going to engage it because I do not want to have to engage enemies when a Region is the active location. I just want to blast through that. So, yeah, there's going to be five damage on the Redhorn Pass. Yuck. Okay, so that readied Sam. It also readied Pippin. Pippin's attacking for two. Sam is currently defending for three because he's got that Ranger trait card. Uh, attacking enemy gets plus one, plus two if it was engaged this round. So Sam actually takes two damage, so that's not great. Pippin swings for two, Aragon, Aragorn <laughs> for three, and then, of course, Mary also swings in for uh, five, which is awesome. And then I can exhaust the Dagger of Westernaise because Mary participated in an attack that killed something, so you exhaust a weapon with Foe Hammer and draw three cards. And I got, okay, another Gimli. Oh, my gosh, build a pony and Legolas. Perfect. Very perfect. Okay, that worked out really well. I like to engage an enemy and know I can kill it because engaging enemies and having them attack is really nasty. All right, let's go into the next round. And wow, my third foe hammer. This is great. Normally I don't draw this much card draw, so uh, this deck is working really well. Let's put in Build the Pony for free because I control Sam, and he's going to give all my hobbits plus one hit point, which of course is amazing. Let's put on the ring, and I'm going to give that resource to one of my tactics heroes so I can play Legolas next turn. And now let's play Frodo's Intuition. So two fellowship resources. It's going to give all my heroes plus one willpower. And then I draw a card for each Hobbit hero I control. I get Gandalf's Staff, a very good tale, and a Bow of the Galadrium. Awesome, okay. All right, let's go questing with Sam, Mary, Aragorn. They're all boosted by one. I just wanna clear this location. I hope I don't get an enemy. Uh, unfortunately, I do. It's another Howling Warg, so I don't have to engage it, but I do have to travel to a location. So we're going to put the final two progress on the location, and then the rest of it spills over to the quest card. And I, just, I wasn't ready to advance. I was worried I would accidentally send too much willpower, so that's why I left all these other characters up. Now i got to distribute five damage out. So all the hobbits are plus one hit point, and then Bill can take a damage. Gimli can take a damage, so there's five. Okay, uh, so this goes in the victory display, so we did that. And now we have to travel to a Region, so when it is explored, we're going to discard allies based on the amount of damage here. And if I get one of those regiments of crows or something, I mean, that just deals damage to the active location, so uh, that's not great. All right, let's exhaust Bill and Gimli. So that is six resources worth of allies, and we're going to play a very good tale. So I get to shuffle my deck, then I discard the top five cards, and I can put in up to two allies that don't exceed the cost of the two allies I exhausted. A lot of very good tales being told in Rivendell, so a uh, very thematic card, I think. Okay, I mean, the odds of this hitting are kind of low, but it's just one more way for me to get the Fellowship online, so let's see what we got. We got Frodo's Intuition, Raymond of War, uh, Thorngill, the Black Arrow, and Mithril Shirt. Nope, no allies okay well at the very least we got non-ally cards out of the deck so i've increased my odds of drawing the allies so i mean it kind of works either way okay uh end of the round everybody's gonna ready lots of damage on the board i want to clear a region with no damage on it uh we get gimli's axe so he gets plus one attack and then 
after the attack is done, you deal an additional damage to the attacking enemy. So that's pretty good. All right, let's put in Legolas. So he costs four. And then when he participates in an attack that destroys an enemy, he will draw you a card. So that's excellent. We need one more. One more character needs to come into play. And we have it. It's Gandalf. So this is Overhill, Underhill, Gandalf. He costs five. All of his stats are fours. And he does not exhaust a quest. But then at the end of the round, you need to raise your threat by two to keep him in play. But folks, that is my ninth character. So the fellowship has been made. We get to flip the card. The walkers are here. And this says we cannot play any more allies. And then each of our characters gets plus one to all of their stats, which is just bonkers. And then if a character leaves play, we flip it back to side A. Okay, very cool. Very, very cool to get the Fellowship online on turn three. I uh, was not expecting that. This is going really well. So everybody's boosted by one. So, of course, you know, that that's just nuts. Frodo put the ring on, and I got a tactics resource from that. Questing, I will send Sam, Pippin, Gimli, and Gandalf, who doesn't exhaust. And this is when I realized my threat has only gone up by one, which I knew wasn't right, so I get that corrected. So we are sending 15 against two. Now, this is interesting. We get the Great Warg Chief, a 4, 5, 3, 6, can't have attachments, and then after it engages you, discard cards from the encounter deck until a warg enemy is discarded and put that enemy into play engaged with you. Okay, so we added four threat, so we're going to place four on the active and then five on the quest. I revealed an enemy, so Gimli readied. So unfortunately... I'm not going to advance, which I would have liked to advance, honestly, to stage two right now. Actually, I don't know. that Revealing the Great Warg Chief right here is, is kind of weird. But the, the good news is, is we got rid of Oregion with no damage on it. And now we're engaging an enemy with no active location. And then the Warg that we're going to discard and engage us also won't place a damage. And if it's a Howling Warg, his attack won't place a damage. So... Look at all these locations, my goodness. So not having a, an active location right now is pretty good. Okay, this is good because this guy uh, surges, so it's good just to discard him and add him. So Pippin readied, Sam readied, Sam got boosted twice, and because of the Fellowship contract, he's actually defending for five. Gandalf's going to take the Great Warwick Chief, uh, undefended damage. That, oh gosh, there was that Regiment of Crows. Okay, uh, so Gandalf was fine there, five against five. Sam defends, five against four discard and non-objective attachment okay i'll get rid of old bogey stories and now let's swing back so when mary participates in an attack with another character if you destroy the enemy you get to ready the character so mary and legless together will kill that little warg so that's awesome because i get to draw all kinds of cards mary exhausts the dagger of western A's, play foe hammer draw three cards so let's see what we got. Gandalf, Legolas, and yes, the free peoples. Okay. And then because Legolas also participated, I draw a card and I get a pipe. And then Mary's ability readies Legolas. And now, even though I could kill the Great Warg Chief, I don't want to. So let me just do the math. So I do exactly one less damage than would kill him, leaving him with one hit point. So there we go. We have dealt five of the six damage. And let's go into the next round. Because I control Gandalf, I got to raise my threat by an additional two. But this is fine. I should be able just to quest really hard and fly through these next two stages as fast as possible. Fly, you fools! Okay. And I draw Friend of Friends, another stat booster for two hobbits once I get two of those. This deck is so powerful. I mean, it's almost not even fair. <laughs> the quest doesn't really stand a chance. All right, let's play Gandalf Staff. So it's another way for me to either draw a card, add a resource, or discard a shadow card. Well, I don't need to draw cards, and I don't need resources. So this is going to be helping me get rid of shadow cards from non-unique enemies. So a uh, great card to have to avoid nasty shadows. Costs two. Going on Gandalf, of course. And then Gandalf's also going to smoke a pipe. So that's basically card draw in a way you can do a switch with a card in your hand with the card on top of your deck uh, i do have a copy of flame of anor where you would want a high cost card as the top card of your deck but uh putting on gandalf because let's smoke some pipes right okay frodo is going to pop on the ring i'm going to get 
another resource, and then I'm going to spend all the resources I have to put in Andril. Flame of the West, artifact, item, weapon, attached to a noble hero or Aragorn. Attached hero gets plus one to all of their stats, and then after an attack in which the attached hero defends, I can exhaust Andril to declare the attached hero as an attacker against the enemy. Uh, what's really great is if I don't use that ability and I just use it as a weapon, uh, I have a weapon in my opening hand from this quest by grabbing Andril. So, triggers foe hammer. Uh, really awesome. Okay, Gandalf doesn't exhaust a quest. Everybody's boosted by one. I mean, I only need to make one progress, so... I know I'm going to be engaging an enemy next round. So I'm not really too concerned about much here. Alright, I'm up against two, and the card we get is Snowdrifts. Okay, so that would attach to the active location. If there isn't one, it surges, and then we get another Howling Warg. So I'm glad it's not a location. We're going to advance, and uh, let's fight a pack of wolves. So the hunt is up. I gotta search the encounter deck and discard pile for a Warg enemy and put it in the staging area. One of those enemies that is found has to be the Great Warg Chieftain. So that's why it was weird to get the Great Warg Chieftain last round. So instead, I'm going to grab another Howling Warg. Because as long as I don't have active locations, I don't mind these guys. 3B, 12 progress needed. During the travel phase, we have to travel to a location. Forced, after a location enters play, place one damage on it and forced. And when we engage an enemy, we place a damage on the active location. So lots of ways to add damage to locations if you have one, which we don't. So that's very nice. Okay, so let's engage a Howling Warg. And we're not going to have to worry about this guy. So we will have two attacks coming. And I can discard the shadow from the Howling Warg thanks to Gandalf's staff. It was nothing. It's only attacking for three. So I will... First have Gandalf defend the big attack of five against five, no problem. Sam will defend the Howling Warg, no problem. And then now we can do some killing. So we'll have Merry and Legolas swing in together to kill the Great Warg Chief. That will draw me a card from Legolas. It'll draw me three cards from Foe Hammer. And then Merry will once again ready Legolas. So, you know, it's just insane. And my goodness, we get... Naria, friend to friends, and Sting. So if you want to play a deck where you're just boosting stats nonstop, uh, this one will do it. All right, so we're going to kill this guy with Legolas and Aragorn, and then Legolas will draw me a card. And then let's not forget, Aragorn says after he participated in an attack that destroys an enemy, uh, you get to engage a different enemy. So let's do that. Aragorn is also reducing the defense of all these enemies by one. I always forget about that. So engaging that enemy would ready Sam, ready Pippin, and uh, obviously I have plenty of attack to kill this guy as well. So that was pretty good. Killed three enemies in one turn. All right, let's go into the next round. Okay, we get Boromir. He's a little late to the party. I can't uh, put him in play because I'm only allowed to have nine characters in play. So that's all right, Boromir. We'll get you in the next one. Uh, so I can play friend of friends on... Mary and Sam, that's going to boost all of their stats, including hit points. And then I can play Narya on Gandalf. So he has a leadership trait, which really doesn't matter. But he also can exhaust to ready two allies and give them plus one attack and defense till the end of the phase. So obviously this deck is all about boosting stats and it's worked like a charm. Let's put the ring on and we'll get one more resource and then go into the quest phase. Sam has plus two willpower, Pippin has plus one, Bill has plus one, Gandalf doesn't exhaust, Gimli has plus one. We're going to send 19. We are up against two. We got to make 12 progress. That should be good. And we get, ooh, this is going to be interesting, Lust for the Ring. All right, Corruption, Peril, Surge, when revealed, attached to a non-fellowship hero in play, counts as a conditioned attachment. Forced, after the one ring exhausts, raise each player's threat by one and reduce the attach hero's willpower to zero until the end of the round. This is one of the only cards, this might be the only card in the deck that punishes you for exhausting the ring. So it looks like I won't be putting the ring on anymore, uh, which is fine. Deck's already up and running. Let's put that on Mary because he most likely is never questing. So Mary uh, is trying to get the ring from Frodo. He's thinking about it. And then we get the red horned foothills, four threat, five progress. 
While it's the active location forced, after an enemy is added to the staging area, it gets minus five engagement until the end of the round, and then forced. When it's explored, we gotta discard cards equal to the amount of damage on it. All right, that's that's not a big deal. Ends up being 18 to six, so we just barely made our 12 progress. And then when I looked at the quest card, that reminded me, oh yeah, I was supposed to add a damage to that location when it came into play. All right, but we do advance to stage four, the Gates of Moria. We make the Doors of Durin the active location. We add the Watcher in the Water to the staging area. We attach the Ring Bearer to the Watcher in the Water face down, discarding all tokens from it, keeping all cards attached to the Ring Bearer. The Doors of Durin are our active location. It's nine progress. It's a gate. It's immune. Progress must be placed on each other active location before it can be placed here. Progress cannot be placed here unless we control the Ring Bearer. And then if there is nine damage here, we lose. And then the Watcher in the Water, pretty nasty. 50 engagement. 5, 6, 5, 12, creature, indestructible, immune, cannot leave the staging area, but it's considered to be engaged with each of us, and then forced, after placing the sixth damage here, we get control of the ring bearer, exhausted with one damage on it. Okay, so we gotta deal six damage to this watcher to grab Frodo back from its slimy tentacle grasp. Okay, for B, there can be two active locations, and then during the travel phase, the players must travel to a location if able. After an enemy engages a player, place one damage on each active location. If the doors of Durin are explored, we win! Okay, so that's the big thing. All right, so we got to travel to the Redhorn foothills. So we got to get through the five progress there and the nine progress of the doors. So we got to make 14 progress after we get Frodo back. So we are not going to engage that warg, and we're going to get attacked for six. Gandalf can't get rid of the shadow card because it's a uh, unique enemy. Gandalf is currently defending for five. And the shadow is attacking enemy gets plus one, plus two if it was engaged this round. All right, Gandalf will take two damage. And now we get to swing back. So Legolas for four and Aragorn for five. Merry for, good golly, what is he? He's one, two, plus the dagger, three, four, plus friend of friends, five, plus the fellowship, six. So Merry for six. So yeah, six plus five plus four. All right, cool. We're gonna do 15 attack, which means we get to have 10 go through, which is obviously more than six. So we will get Frodo back. He's exhausted. He's got one damage on him. We're gonna go into the next round and we gotta just make um, a decent amount of progress, 14, and we will win. Let's use Gandalf's staff to get a resource. And then, yeah, I know what card I'm playing next turn. So quickly ready up, raise my threat by three, and we draw, ah, Glamdring. Okay, I do not need extra attack right now, and there's no orcs. Okay, let's just go right into questing. I am sending everyone. So when I add up all their willpower, including the boost from the fellowship contract, and then the boost from friend of friends on Frodo. All right, I am sending everyone. So they're all boosted by the fellowship contract, and then friend of friends is also boosting Sam and Mary. That is a total of 31. And then I am going to spend five resources to play the Free Peoples. You can only play it if you control characters that have nine different traits among them. You ready everyone and give them plus one willpower each. So obviously that's going to increase my willpower by nine. And I definitely have nine different traits. I have a starry, sylvan, warrior, dwarf, pony, creature, ring bearer, dunadyn, Hobbit and Ranger. So plenty of different character traits. Very fun card to play, super thematic. And this is gonna be it. So we are currently up against seven. Ah, jeez, Storm of Howls. Okay, so I will just give the warg in the staging area minus 20 engagement cost. And uh, yeah, it doesn't surge or anything. So we added no threat. So five goes on the red horn foothills. And then I'd have to discard a card, there we go. And then all the rest gets dumped on the doors of Durin. We get the heck out of here, away from the Watcher, and run into the mines where we are up against the Long Dark is going to be the next quest. Okay, let's take a look at the quest resolution. Side A told us we earned all those boons, but unfortunately, if Lust for the Ring is attached to a hero, we have earned that burden. So now Lust for the Ring is a part of our campaign pool. That stinks. Thematic, though, I guess. All right. Well, I hope everybody enjoyed this video, and uh, I look forward to making the next one.
Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.